Hi guys, we're going to talk today about our thought life and what we're thinking about. Have you ever caught yourself thinking about something crazy and if you had really been thinking about what you're thinking about, you would have never thought about that? Um, that happens, I think, to all of us from time to time. But did you know that God is really interested in what you're thinking about? Before I was born again, before I became a Christian, I thought very poorly of myself. I thought I was too skinny. I thought I was ugly. I knew that I looked goofy because of the way that my parents made me dress um, and how they made me wear, wear my hair. This was in the early 70s and I had to have a way, way out of style page boy haircut because that was the, the best thing, I guess, for us at that time and, and clothes from the 1940s and the 1950s that my grandmother had found in garage sales. And um, I didn't have a family that gave much love or encouragement or, or positive reinforcement, so I didn't think very much of myself. I also saw no use in church. I thought they were all hypocrites, even though I didn't know anything about them. I just thought they were. And I thought that at that point that God didn't really exist. So I thought of a lot of things in my head that weren't really too good. When I was 15, I became born again. I, I took Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I repented of my sins and everything changed. Uh, everything in my thought life, uh, my brain just got rewired and everything changed. I immediately had what the Bible called is a renewed mind. I was a new creation. I thought about how wonderful God was, how wonderful his word was. I thought well of myself. I knew God loved me and I knew he created me to worship him. I thought well of all Christians. They were now my brothers and sisters in the Lord. I thought well of people who were not saved, who weren't Christians. And I understood the state they were in and uh, that they needed, needed a savior just like I did. But I loved the Bible, I loved the word of God. So his word was continually in my mind. I didn't worry, I wasn't afraid, I didn't think wrong things about uh, other people, I didn't think, uh, didn't dwell on things that were done to me that was wrong, that were wrong in the past, and I didn't hold any grudges. And I lived that way for at least 15 years where everything in my mind, all my thoughts were just, just pure and, and wonderful. And I was around other people who thought the same way as I did. Um, I was not around any negative or critical people at all. But um, I guess in my 30s, at some point, I moved, moved to a different place and, and had to go to a different church. And everything just seemed fine, and I didn't pick up on it at first, but um, I began to understand that the pastor of that church was extremely critical and very fault-finding of his own church members. Um, and after going there for many years without even knowing it, I kind of became critical myself and fault finding and just thinking that it was just spiritual discernment or spiritual insight like the pastor portrayed it. Like when he found fault with people, it was because God told him that. And um, that wasn't good because it, it causes a person just to be uh, look at people with critical eyes or fault finding eyes. When I saw what was going on, I removed myself from that situation. And because of that, uh, that I went through, I've become much more aware of my thought life. In our thoughts, we can dwell on many good things and we can dwell on many bad, unhealthy, and negative things. Did you know the Bible has so much to say about our minds and the things that, that um, we think about and dwell on? And here's some things that the Bible has to say about our minds. Our minds can be afflicted with madness, blindness, and confusion. We can have an anxious mind. We can apply our mind. We can bear in mind. We can change our mind. We can have a corrupt mind, a cunning mind, a depraved mind. We can have things that do not enter into our mind. We can have futile or, or what's called useless thinking. We can have a keen mind, which would be a sharp mind. We can keep things in mind. We can make up our mind. We can have a mind that does not rest. We can have a mind that imagines confusing things. 
We can have a mind that's busy with evil. We can have the mind of Christ. We can have a mind of the rash. We can never mind. Uh, we can have a mind that has no room for God in our thoughts. We can have one, uh, uh, be a one mind and be unified. We can be out of our mind. Uh, we can ponder things in our mind. We can put things out of our mind. We can be in a right mind. We can sing with our mind, pray with our mind. We can have a troubled mind, an unspiritual mind. We can have vain imaginations. We can have a willing mind and we can wrestle with thoughts. And did you know all of those things that I just read are in the Bible? What do you think God would be happy with you spending your thought life on? Time, what what uh, he would be happy with you thinking about? And uh, sometimes we don't even think about what we're thinking about, but by what standards do you uh, control what your mind is thinking about? I want to encourage you today to have a higher standard in your thought life, that standard being the Word of God, the Bible. The Bible says that God knows our minds and tests our minds. In Jeremiah 17, 10, it says, I, the Lord, search the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserved. Um, in the heart, and the mind and the conduct are all related. So God examines our mind and he rewards us according to our mind, our conduct, and what our de deeds are. And did you know how much power our mind has? In Proverbs 23, 7, it says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So the way that we think affects our heart and affects what we do and it affects the very person that we are. In uh, Romans 8, verse 6, it says, The mind of the sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it. So we see in the scripture that um, a person that's not born again, that's not Christian, has a sinful mind, and it doesn't submit to God's law, and a lot of times it doesn't even know God's law. But once we become a Christian of the Christian mind, the word of God says, we have the mind of Christ. And that's found in 1 Corinthians 2.16. So it's such a blessing to have, to have the mind of Christ. And we want to honor that gift that God's given us by dwelling on good things. God's given us the responsibility over our minds. Uh, we can keep our minds healthy or we can uh, keep it unhealthy. And the way we keep God's mind healthy is by just uh, watching what we're thinking about and thinking and meditating upon God's word. So I just wanna give you some tests to see if your uh, mind is pleasing to God and if you're thinking the good thoughts. Uh, the first test is, uh, are your thoughts uh, passing the love test? In Mark 12, 30, it says, love the Lord with God with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. So if we're walking in love toward people, uh, if we're thinking thoughts of love, then we're pleasing to God. And that's the love test. In 1 Corinthians 13, 4, it says, love is patient, love is kind. It does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud. It is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. So we think about <clears throat> examining our thoughts and seeing if we pass the love test. We think, is my mind, am I thinking, uh, love, thoughts of love, is my mind patient, is it kind, is it not envious, is my mind, are my thoughts boastful, are not proud, are not rude, not self-seeking, not easily angered, and this is a good one, keep no record of wrongs, in my mind, am I keeping records of, record of wrongs, or am I not, that's, you know, an, an evaluation for a love test, love uh, is, are my mind has my mind delighting in evil? Am I happy when something bad happens to someone? 
or am I unhappy about that? Uh, love always protects in my mind. I'm protecting other people. I'm trusting, always trusting in people, always hoping in the Lord and trusting in, in, in his goodness. And uh, my mind always perseveres. It doesn't give up. Um, so if we're meditating upon the Lord, if our thoughts, if our thought life is full of love, we'll be doing all those things. And um, when it talks about uh, keeps no record of wrongs, uh, one thing that we really have to remember is when a dear friend or an acquaintance or, or a family member tells us about someone else that offended them, it's really, really important not to be offended for them. Always remember that there's three sides to every story. There's a person A, person B, and then there's God's side. And you can never make any judgments on, on another person until you hear all three sides of the story. The second test is, do my thoughts pass the faith test? In Romans 14, 23, it says, everything that does not come from faith is sin. So if my thoughts are for, full of anxiety and worry and trouble, um, they're, not, they're not passing the faith test. So worry, fear, anxiety, defeat, inferiority, low self-esteem don't pass the faith test. And they're sinful thoughts. And that's hard, hard for us to comprehend that God thinks if we worry that that's sin, but it's not faith, so it's sin. Um, and in keeping with this thought, I want you to really be careful of any kind of doom and gloom hysteria that ever, ever happens. Um, a lot of times there'll be, uh, well, we talked to someone just the other day that, <laughs> Um, well, it was about a month ago, and they were sure that the whole East Coast was going to be hit with a tsunami, and they had taken all their money out of the stock market because the East Coast was going to be hit with a tsunami, and they knew it, and they had inside information with the military that they knew it was going to be hit with a tsunami. So we have to be really careful about people who have all kinds of doom and gloom, hysteria, and conspiracy theories, and and things about financial collapse and chemicals and everything. Well, there could be a truth to some of that. We have to use wisdom and not walk in fear, fear in dealing with these things. In Isaiah 26, 3, it says, You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. And see, our mind can be full of faith and not be full of fear and anxiety. The next one is, do my thoughts pass the purity test? In Romans 13, 14, it says, rather clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. A lot of times our thoughts can be just full of, you know, how we can please ourselves, how we can satisfy ourselves, how we can make ourselves happy. And that's not what God wants our thought life to be filled with. And there's so many ways that we can, um, we can combat this. Um, one thing is that we can think about how we can do good to other people. And as far as impure thoughts, oh my goodness, we can, we can uh, cut off the supply valve to uh, impure thoughts coming into our mind. Um, you know, the media, music, TVs, computers, streaming services, are just full of uh, pornography and um, cursing and all kinds of evil things that can get into our minds. Just um, basically, um, if you turn on a PG movie now or a, P uh, a TV show that's or a series that's rated PG, a lot of times we have to shut it off in the first five or 10 minutes because they'll take the name, name of the Lord in vain or something like that. And so um, you really have to watch what is going into your mind if you wanna have pure thoughts. Another way to uh, keep your mind pure, keep pure thoughts in your mind, is to stay away from certain people. It's good to stay away from people who know everybody's business. You know that there's uh, people who say they aren't gossips, but they listen to everybody's gossip. Uh, we, we always need to stay away from people like that. And a lot of times this, this kind of thing is cloaked in, in concern or, 
or, you know, oh, I, I'm not a gossip, but I listen to everybody because they're hurting and they want to tell me how everybody's bothered them or, or offended them. We just need to stay away from people who are associated with that. We need to um, stay away from people who are always depressed, are complaining, are criticizing, are people who have everything figured out. In other words, they're fault finders with other people. We just need to watch who are around because like I said at the very beginning, those the kinds of things can rub off on us. And we need to stay away from people who refuse to forgive other people's faults and offenses. We need to stay away from people who are always hurt because it, it will rub off on you. It will just, it just will. So we need to be very careful about um, what we let into our mind because those things will affect our thought life. Uh, when impure, evil, idle, anxious, fretful, unfruitful thoughts come up in our minds, and they will, believe me, they will, we need to recognize them and deal with them. In Hebrews 4.12, it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing of soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. So a real, real great way to evaluate our thinking is just to stay in the Bible and the Word of God because the Word of God will slice it and dice it and, and will reveal what you're thinking about. And uh, in Romans uh, 12, 2 says, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. See, we can't really judge God's perfect will for our, our life unless our mind is renewed with the word of God. That means reading the Bible, studying the Bible, meditating on the Bible. The last test is the fruitful test. The Bible talks about idle thoughts, you know, just idle thoughts. If we spend an inordinate, inordinate amount of time on unfruitful thoughts like hours and hours of watching TV or computer games or whatever, the Bible warns against that. Um, all things can, uh, all kinds of things can come up when people have idle thoughts. Um, bizarre things can come up. Um, they can concoct things in their mind. I remember uh, many years ago, um, we got a call at the church office and a lady in the church was telling us she knew why another person left the church and she, what she said was totally wrong and it was totally bizarre and it was um, so bizarre that I almost fell on the floor laughing, but it was also so sad because you wanted to cry because it was so bizarre. And she actually believed this story that she had, she had concocted. And the unfortunate thing is that other people would listen to her and believe what she said. So she was spending her time on unfruitful thoughts. She didn't know what she was talking about. So we need to be really careful that we don't spend time with unfruitful thoughts and con concoct things in our, in our head that aren't even true. In 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. So that takes a lot of work. Capturing your thoughts takes a lot of work. In Philippians 4, 8, it says, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Well, the Bible gave us a lot of instruction there, didn't it? It told us exactly the kind of things we're supposed to be thinking about. In Psalm 19, 14, it says, May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, meaning what you're thinking about, be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my God and my Redeemer. So we want to have that be such a great desire in us that it's our prayer that our thoughts would be pleasing to the Lord, along with the words of our mouth. In Joshua 1, 8, it says, Do not let this book of the law depart from your mouth, Meditate it on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in, in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. In other words, the word of God, we're supposed to be thinking about it. We're supposed to be pondering it day and night. 
and God says he would make us our way prosperous. So um, I want you all to think about what you're thinking about and meditate on God's word and speak God's word and take captive any thoughts that are not pleasing to God. And I hope this was helpful to you. If you've never um, accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you've never become a Christian, I encourage you to do that right now. What you, uh, the Bible tells us to do is repent of our sins. That means that we're sorry uh, for the sins that we have uh, committed in our life. And we want to turn around and we take Jesus as our Lord and Savior and believe in our hearts that Jesus died for the forgiveness of our sins. So if you've never done that, I'm going to lead you in a prayer right now. Father, I repent of my sins. I am sorry for the way that I've lived. And Father, I ask that you would wash me with the blood of Jesus, that I would be forgiven of all my sins. And I take Jesus as my Lord and Savior right now. I want to live for him. I want to please you, Lord God. I want to become a Christian in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer, I encourage you to, to let us know. Let us know that you've given your life to the Lord. And we would love to send you a Bible. So just uh, there's contact information below this video. You can contact us and let us know. And I just encourage you to think happy thoughts that are pleasing to the Lord. Bye-bye.